Hidden Trail Lilia arrived at a cluster of shops marking the edge of the marketplace that separated the microtech sector from the bay and read over the message again. It had taken her all of a heartbeat to decode the message that afternoon, revealing a location and a time. Now there, she worried she might not have spent enough time on it. She didn't know what to do next. She looked around, making note of the names of each shop and stand within her line of sight, worrying that she had missed something in the message, a key piece of information she now felt she was lacking. She looked at the message on her communication device and then around again, not worried about standing out or looking overly suspicious. On the odd chance she was noticed, she would come across as an apprentice-aged girl trying to find the friends or dates she was meeting. But the nagging feeling that she had mistranslated the message ate at her, and she stepped over to the wall, moving out of the traffic pattern, to take a closer look at her work. Everything checked out, she hadn't missed anything. She scanned the food stands arranged together into a little food court on the other side of the street, and then the surrounding shops, hoping for a familiar face or symbol. Her eyes traveled to the shops right around her, and then she saw it. A small wall stone less than an arm's length away, glowing a soft shade of silver not much brighter than the actual color of the wall. She stepped toward it, catching herself before she could indulge in her desire to touch the stone. It was definitely a different shade than the surrounding stones. She looked at it from different angles, stepping past it to look back at it. Another stone just a few feet away was now glowing, a stone that she couldn't have picked out of the wall moments earlier. She took a step back from the wall and looked ahead. No other stones were glowing, but these two couldn't have been a coincidence. She continued along the wall, dragging the fingertips of her right hand lightly along the wall. Another stone lit up, and then another. A voice in her head urged caution, but she was too fascinated by the phenomenon to quit searching. At the end of a block of shops, she stopped. With no wall, she didn't know where to go next. A few steps around the corner didn't yield another glowing stone and when she walked back to the last one she had seen, it had vanished. It reappeared as she approached that section of the wall again. Weird. She walked past it and turned, but the stone had faded again. She walked back to it, and the stone glowed again. The voice in her head begged her to turn back, go back to the meeting spot in the message, and wait. But she couldn't shake the feeling she was on to something and she had learned at a very early age to trust her gut. She gave the wall another look, and then the message. The stones had been in a relatively straight line along the wall, not terribly far apart. The next stone had to be somewhere nearby. Meeting someone, dearie. The voice, kind and elderly, snapped her out of her thoughts. Um, yes, but I don't think they're here yet. Lilia palmed her communication device into her pocket. Well, don't you worry. I'm sure he'll be here soon. The woman finished brushing off the mat leading into her shop and went back inside. Lilia took a slow breath and released it just as slowly before she looked around the intersection, such as it was. No motor traffic was allowed through this end of the marketplace. With a quick glance around her, she stepped off the curb and fixed her eyes just above the road as she crossed. Peripheral vision gave her a pretty decent sweep of the flower and jewelry stands nearby. A sparkle caught her eye. Keeping her eyes fixed ahead of her, she made a note of the cobblestone now glowing a faint but distinct shade of orange. She smirked and continued, soon finding another cobblestone of a similarly disturbing glow. The next stone was off at an angle. Lilia nearly missed it, except she was so focused on her footsteps she nearly collided with a courier cutting through the marketplace on his bike. Sorry, she mumbled as she shifted toward the new stone. The cobblestones were harder to follow. They didn't follow as straight a line as the wall stones did until they led her to an alley a couple of blocks toward the waterfront and the lights returned to the wall stones. 
Again she let her fingertips trail along the wall, marveling at how smooth the lit stones were in comparison to the stones around them, despite their rough appearance. The path came to an apparent end at a pile of crates. She moved around the boxes, but nothing lit up. Frustrated, she started trying to shift the crates themselves. But she didn't get far before she discovered the crates didn't actually go all the way back to the wall, and she crawled through to a door with the guild symbol glowing on it. She entered and walked down a flight of stairs into a lounge. Seated around the room, engaged in conversations, were some very familiar faces. Guild members she'd met over the last week. One, a woman clad in dark pants and a jacket modeled in the colors of the bricks in the alley, approached her. Good, you found the place. Challenge passed. Yeah, but it was crazy. Lilia followed her mentor over to a couch. How did you get those stones enchanted like that? I thought magic was something that only existed in the virtual world. Magic? Her mentor smirked. Lilia, dear, it's technology. The stones are coded to react to the bracelets of our guild members. We have several of these paths built throughout the city to help members find safe houses. Lilia froze. And then she remembered a few days ago when she was sent to a body shop in Microtech Sector, where the tech did something to her bracelet. They must have been adding the guild code. Right. Cool. Her mentor laughed.